Hey, it's Paul. Today we're going to look at setting up Kendo UI for Angular. So if you've used Angular before, you may have seen some UI packages such as Material 2, Prime NG, and of course, Kendo. Let's get set up with a new project generated by the Angular CLI. If you haven't got the Angular CLI installed, you can check out a video on the description for setting that up and getting started with Angular components. So we're going to hit get started on this Kendall UI guide and the first thing that we'll have to do is register for a trial. So if we hit register for a trial, and I will of course put the link for this in the description, it'll take us to this page to sign in and register for an account. When you've done that, we can go back here and now we'll have to set up our project. So the first thing is to install the Angular CLI. I've already done that, but if you haven't, head over to your command line and run npm install dash g at angular slash cli. This will install the angular cli and we'll be able to continue creating a new project. So now we have to make a new angular project. So we can do that by saying ng new and I'm going to call my project Kendall. And the reason why we have to set our style equal to scss is because Kendall uses scss for their projects. So by saying dash dash style is equal to scss our project will be generated with all SCSS style sheets instead of CSS. So let's hit enter on this. You'll notice that it creates a new Angular project and downloads the dependencies from NPM. Right now, this is the same for any Angular project and we've done no Kendall specific stuff at this time. So now that that's created, we can CD into Kendall, our new project that we created. And what we have to do now is authenticate with the progress NPM registry. So if we take a look before we do anything in the command line at the progress npm registry access, we see that we have these components down the side. So if we wanted to install the button component from this registry, we would have to make sure that we're scoping ourselves to at progress because the button is held at at progress slash and then the name of the component such as button. You can see this inside of the button overview. For example, it's at progress slash kendo dash angular dash buttons. So let's do that by heading over to our command line and authenticating ourselves with that registry. We can say npm login dash dash registry is equal to, and then we need to copy this here, which is the registry dot npm dot telric dot com. So https registry dot npm dot telric dot com. And within that registry, we have to scope ourselves to the at progress packages. So we can say dash dash scope is equal to at progress. When you've done that, you'll have to log in with the account that you created over at the Telerik site. I've already done that. So let's skip down to the next section, which is adding a Kendo UI package. So the Kendo UI components do use Angular animations. And this is a package that was part of Angular Core inside of Angular 2.x but it's no longer part of Angular Core after Angular 4.x. So what we have to do at this point is install the Angular animations package as well as any other Kendall UI packages that we want to use. So I'm going to run npm install. We're going to say dash dash save to save this to package.json. We'll install the Kendall Angular buttons package. We'll also install the localization package and finally the animations package. We can hit enter and save this to our project. If we then open our project up inside of Visual Studio Code, the first thing that we have to do is head over to our app.module.ts and we have to import the following things. Firstly, import the browser animation module from Angular slash platform browser slash animations. And secondly, we have to import from the progress slash kendo angular buttons package the buttons module we can add both of these imports to our root ng module by saying browser animations module and the buttons module this will allow us to use both the buttons and browser animations within our project so i'm going to simply add it to app component.html for now i'm going to remove the title inside of our components and now we'll add a button as standard, so we don't have to import any custom button element. But the only thing that we do have to add to this button is the Kendo button attribute. 
So when we've done that, that will transform our button to be of the Kendor UI styling. Let's add some text for our button right now. So we'll say Kendor UI button. If we then run this in the browser by saying ng serve, and I'm going to add dash o to the end of this, this should open up inside of Chrome. We now have our albeit very zoomed in button. At the moment, it looks just the same as a normal button, and this is because we need to import the style sheet for our button. This is stored in a separate package. So if we head back over to our command line, we can say npm install at progress slash kendo dash theme dash default. We'll also need to save this to our package.json. So let's hit dash dash save and click enter. We can then import the style sheet that we just installed to the project inside of our global styles.scss. We can do that by saying at import, and then we can pass in the path of at progress slash kendall dash theme dash default dash scss dash all. So if we now look at our button inside of our project, we do have a nicely styled button. We can give this the primary theme color if we then go back to our button and add the primary attribute equal to true. Now our button turns into this orange red color with white text. I hope you found this introduction to Kendall UI useful and it's going to set the stage for many other Kendall UI videos to come. If you've liked this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out the new Learn Ionic 3 course if you're interested in cross-platform mobile development. I do have a link and discount code for that inside of the description that you can check out right now. Until then, my name's Paul Halliday and I'll see you very soon in the next video.